Well, a very good evening, viewers. This is South Speaks. And the topic for today, the Valmiki Corporation scam that has sparked off an intense political drama in Karnataka. On one hand, it's the enforcement directorate that's probing and proving to be a bone of contention between the ruling party and the opposition netas in Karnataka. The ED has detained several individuals, including former Karnataka minister Nagendra and also his wife was taken in for questioning. The investigation has revealed misuse of funds meant for tribal welfare with allegations now that these funds were used for political gains including the purchase of liquor before general elections. Not just that, purchase of Lamborghinis for personal pleasure is also something that the ED mentions in that release that they put out. The Congress party now has accused the enforcement directorate of, of acting on behalf of the central government to destabilize the Karnataka administration and not just that, go after opposition leaders, not just in Karnataka, they're saying across the country. They allege that the enforcement directorate is pressurizing those arrested to implicate senior leaders, including Chief Minister Siddharamaya, as a part of a big political vendetta. The BJP too has intensified its attack on the state government. They've staged protests now through the last few days inside the assembly and outside as well. They're demanding accountability for the alleged misappropriation of funds. They claim that the state government's involvement in the scam is undeniable and have been pressing for a thorough investigation into this particular case. So at this point in time, while the SIT of course is investigating the matter, are they doing a fair job? Is ED doing a fair job? Which investigative agency do you trust? On one hand, the state says, go by the SIT. On the other, the BJP and the JDS says, well, we don't trust the state SIT because there are MLAs involved. There are ministers involved. So let's listen in to some of the reactions that have been pouring in through the course of the day. They have come with a plan not to hear my reply. They wanted to prevent my reply because we have patiently heard all the leader of the opposition and other members who spoke more than seven hours. They spoke more than four, seven hours. We have patiently heard them. But in democracy, in parliamentary system of uh, democracy, they have to listen. What answer we are going to give? CBA is already there. And this issue, Valmiki issue, three uh, investigating agents are investigating. One is SIT, the another is CBI, the third one is uh, ED. They doesn't know the parliamentary proceedings. We allowed them to speak. Whatever, let them come out because we know that we are very clean and government is not involved. Some officials have made some mistake. They are using it in a political way to put on us. But we have taken action. We have formed a SIT. Investigation is going on. CBI is also looking at and ED also looking at. We also know to do politics. Uh, they are doing politics. Let us see why Sidram I should resign. In what way is wrong? What way is connected? The government is afraid because the truth is coming out. Mm. After ED has started investigation, the truth has emerged. So hundred, uh, more than 50 crores has been spent to purchase liquor during Lok Sabha election. So Congress is afraid. Chief Minister himself is very much afraid on this development. Well, sir, let's open this up to our panel of guests so that we can decipher what exactly is happening, what exactly is needed, and how can this entire scam be revealed in its entirety and ensure that the guilty are booked. Madhu and Rao of the BJP is with us today. Lokesh Jindal, political analyst, Vijay Grova, senior journalist, all of them joining us today on the broadcast. Let me open this up with Mr. Lokesh Jindal. Uh, Mr. Jindal, how do you really uh, view how you know what's happening in the state of Karnataka? On one hand, you have the BJP which is saying we don't trust the state SIT. On the other, you know, the Congress says, well, the SIT is doing a good job. Meanwhile, you have central agencies coming in and it's only because of political vendetta they want to finish off Congress leaders. Well, uh, BJP must understand that when the state uh, agencies are doing their job, when the CID has already investigated, it has arrested those who are uh, in suspicion, and the key mastermind is already arrested, a special investigative team has been formed, and 
the new procedure of law has taken effect. I do not understand why is there a need so as to have central agencies brought in. And the moment you bring in central agencies, suddenly this scam takes a political fervor. So immediately we have the Congress will accuse BJP of misusing the central agencies and the BJP will say that it does not support the state agencies. That is going to completely uh, turn this entire issue into political. The better way would have been the state agencies doing their job, coming out with their probe. And then if there were some certain discrepancies, then you could have had the central agencies coming in and uh, doing the probe wherever discrepancy was there. So but right isn't that giving is too much two time to wait for the state agency to investigate it, then look for discrepancies, then the central agencies to come in? There are two points that I want to mention. Uh, you know, to the statement that you made, where you said, what was the reason to bring in CBI? Now, as far as CBI is concerned, it was the bank that went ahead and complained to the CBI because of the volume of the money that is involved here. So it was not that the BJP insisted and this happened. Now, second no. thing that I would like to also ask you, Mr. Jindal, when you look at it from the perspective of how, now, for example, in Karnataka, there have been multiple cases in the recent past where SITs have been formed. One if our viewers, of course, remember, and I could refresh their memory at this point in time, is the Prajwal Revarna case and the Suraj Revarna case. In both of this, the CID or the SIT has been looking into the matter, and we've seen very quick and swift action. Though they were, you know, M M M MLCs and M former MPs or candidates, they were taken into custody, arrests were done. But as far as the Valmiki case is concerned, one valid point that the BJP has raised is for 30 days, you know, despite the suicide note of this official who claimed his own life and said, you know, he also, of course, doesn't name the minister, but he says on the behest of a minister. So wasn't that the duty of the SIT to really bring him in for questioning in the first place? If that didn't happen, then apprehensions, of course, obviously will come up. Well, uh, the procedure of law would be adhered to once the SIT resorts to... Uh, looking at the entire matter, collection of evidences, recording statements, it would be issuing notices to all those who are, those who are within the suspicion and uh, the due procedure would be followed too. But the moment you start sending the central agencies under Prevention of Corruption Act and Prevention of Money Laundering Act, you make an entire complexity out of this issue. You, you give it a political fervor. Why? is it that a constitutional body, the constitution which gives uh, the public law and order as well as the, to the state is carrying out its duty and you are preventing it to happen. So the idea is, Deepak, I would again say that BJP should not resort to petty politics and must allow the state agencies to perform their duties. Okay, Madhu and Rao wants to come in from the BJP. Go ahead, Deepak. Mr. Rao. Deepa, good evening. I, I think uh, Mr. Jindal just now told that he can't understand as to why the central agencies are coming now. Let me explain to him what has happened. I think no one is aware, perhaps, especially Mr. Jindal, as to what has happened. There was a death which has taken place of Chandrasekhar, who was uh, con con committed suicide. There is an FIR registered in Shumoga. Mm -hmm. Second, there is an FIR which is registered in the High Grounds Police Station, uh, according to the uh, complainant that is Rajashekara, who was the who was, who was given the complaint, and the DGM of the Corporation Bank gives a complaint to the CBI. Now these are the complaints which have essentially been given. Now naturally, it is but for natural that whenever there is an allegation of swindling of money, that too especially crores of money from the Treasury departments of a government which has been transferred to 18 fake accounts in different states, it is but for natural for the CBI to jump in and but for natural for the ED to come in. Now, I want to ask a question to the Congress and those supporters of the Congress party. The complaints were given by the officers. Where is BJP in this? What is BJP to do in this, by the way? Did we tell them to transfer amounts to some 18 fake accounts for buying Lamborghinis? Did we tell them to buy liquor? I mean, this is atrocious and this is obnoxious statements made by these people. How can ED come in? How can CBI come in? Who else will come in? Will, will, will Congress party will decide as to what is okay. the, as to what is wrong and what is right? Okay. I, I, 
Mr. Rao, Mr. Rao, okay, okay. On one hand, on one hand, you are saying it was justified for the enforcement directorate to come in. The CBI, of course, the bank went ahead and complained. They are investigating it parallelly. Okay. Now, one one aspect that I want to mention is today the ministers of Karnataka government, Mr. Rao, raised specific questions. They they said that across the country today, the ratio of which you know opposition parties are you know really finding themselves being raided by the enforcement directorate or the CBI is almost over ninety percent. And they're talking about 10 years Deepak, during the UPA regime where it was almost balanced. Let's not. They're let's saying not, that beat, beat Amadmi uh, party in Delhi, on. beat, beat, you know, what happened in Chhattisgarh, so beat say, what happened, you, you know, say, now in Karnataka. They're saying, no, I'm telling you, I, I want you to respond to this charge that has come in. Let me tell you something. Let them tell which ED investigation has stopped against any Neta, even of our party. Point one. Point two. Does that mean to say, one minute, boss. Narayan listen to me. Rane. Does one minute. That that investigation is, is there. You please go. Perhaps you are not aware. The point is this, uh, Deepak. Does that mean to say that whatever the investigation has been done by the ED is wrong in Karnataka? Point three. I just want to ask one thing. What was the SIT doing? Why have the SIT not linked the death of Chandrasekhar to the swindling of money in Valmiki Corporation? You might have. You must have remembered. I just want to remind you of one thing. Just few days back, there was an audio which was floating between the uh, officials of the corporation, where they were saying it was good for us because we were being directed to ensure that we can put the blame on the bank and we will be scot free. This is what has happened even now, and the government sits quiet. Nagendra, one minute. Let me tell. Let me ask a question to the Congress Party. How could crores of money be transferred just from the treasury accounts to some fake accounts without the knowledge of the finance department? I'm really in shock. A 14-time finance minister and a two-time chief minister can tell. I we did not about, do, know about all these things. It's all done by the officials. Can someone believe this? This is this is Mama Mia stories told by the Congress party in Karnataka. Deepak. Okay, you, Mr. Jindal, would you want to respond to that? Yes. Uh, first of all, very quickly, uh, I want to. Uh, I, I also want to bring in Mr. Goa knows, as well. Everybody knows how Prevention of Money Laundering Act gives the power to the ED officials to undertake an arrest. The nation has seen what has happened to the Delhi chief minister. So the moment ED enters the scenario, there is a threat, there is a fear that creates that, is, that gets created in the entire atmosphere. The Secondly, when you're talking about agencies, FIR was already registered. The state has swung into action. There is economic offenses wing, which shall be doing whatever is to be done as per law. Yes, if CBI is brought in, yes, Prevention of Corruption okay. Act, it can initiate the probe. However, the moment ED enters the scenario, there is a threat perception which has political repercussions and which is something that we oppose. We want this probe and investigation to be fair and whoever is guilty and whoever is, who is responsible for this embezzlement must be behind bars, but this should not give an opportunity for, for attaining the political ends. But also the question mark comes up when you have, you know, who was a sitting minister who eventually had to resign for 30 days, he's not issued a notice. There are questions that will come up whether the state can justify a, a proper thorough investigation against their own people, their own MLAs. That is where the apprehension comes up. I want to bring in Mr. Grover. Let's bring in a neutral perspective here as well. Mr. Grover, on one hand, this seems like a fit case for the CBI. Seems like a fit case for the Enforcement Directorate. Crows of money, clearly, of course, being uh, you know moved around, embezzled and swindled. And there's a possible laundering as well that's happened here. And now, while, of course, the opposition has their own apprehensions about central agencies investigating it. But, you know, it, it shouldn't really stop them from doing their job because th this is the crux of the case. That is, money was, of course, swindled. Now, when the enforcement directorate comes in here and they find certain aspects that they put out, uh, there are big apprehensions that are raised. Do you feel it's justified? Uh, Deepak, if you remember when Chandrasekhar's suicide case came up, it first appeared as a very small story in the newspapers. And later on, it you know triggered into a big thing. Now the fact is, if you look at it, you know from the common man perspective, certainly everybody wants to know where the taxpayers' money is going, and that is something that you know people want to get to the crux of the matter and not make it a political debate. Unfortunately, what happens is, uh, while the SIT was formed, the SIT has not even uh, given an initial report, I believe. But the fact is that you know. Isn't this muddling of you know investigations 
going to add to more confusion because clearly the way we saw the proceedings in the house today we saw the way the protests took place the kind of discussions that have taken place pm still needs to answer on that entire uh, thing this is a question where the people are is the state police incapable of investigating this kind of a case or is it not investigating it the thing ed we know the credibility it has earned in the last couple of years has actually come to not and that is something you know that is a perception in the people's mind that if it is given to ed it is purely for political reasons it's not for anything else so this is something where you know we need to leave the politics behind at the end of the day both the congress and the bjp or every political party or every mla is responsible to the people of the state to let the truth come out and that's something where you know i'm sure within the congress also we spoken to several mlas and the thing everybody wants the truth to come out and i think so if the opposition and the ruling government let the investigation happen properly without you know creating more muddles the truth yeah. will come out and that is the confidence that the people have and let's look at it from that point of view that is not about scoring Absolutely. brownie points or to you know force sidaramaiya to get out of the seat or you know to put that kind of pressure politics can be kept aside for some time this is the money for the adivasis which has been swindled by people and that needs to be actually investigated collectively be it the cbi absolutely and, the SIT and of course at this point in time ED. yeah whoever is investigating the matter they need to do justice one is of course there has been a death and you know when he is committed suicide of course he's blame pressure that has come in from various quarters to actually commit this fraud or a crime on the other hand of course it's the taxpayers money that is going and also it's of course meant for you know the st community and all of this needs to be looked into and the agencies need to focus on that and let's hope there's a thorough probe but at the end of the day those guilty of course are booked whoever or however influential they are i'm thanking all our panelists for joining us today on the broadcast